my brother Adam altogether wanted to start his own car dealership. And this video is our actually our first video of showing people the cars. Call me into my junkyard. 2008 Honda Accord, Buick LaCrosse, Chevy Impala, 07 400 EX. <laughs> I love dealer auction day. Today is dealer auction day. I just got back. I bought myself this Silverado for my dealership. That has nothing to do with today's video. If you're watching this channel, you may have already seen some of our videos. My brother, Adam, altogether wanted to start his own car dealership. Where did he do it? Well, he got his dealer out of his home. And this video is our actually our first video of showing people the cars. So my brother, Adam, started his own, let's say you got a dealer's license, right? Not so much a car dealership. Yeah. But it's the beginning to good things. When I started my dealership, I started in my driveway many, many moons ago. And it started in my driveway, in my garage, working out of my driveway, and it just kind of grew. One car to two cars to four cars to eight cars. Same as my Ferrari Flip Series. I started with 400, sold it, made 800, sold it, made 1600, and then snowballed until we have what Flying Wheels is today. Adam, you're essentially doing all that right from the very, very beginning. Trying to. To recap, I'll let you chat a little bit and tell everybody where we're at briefly, and then we'll get into where we're at right now today. All right, so it started with, uh, I think you've seen it, we did the uh, zoning board hearing. I went through all of the steps to get the retail dealer's license. You see my sign back there, handmade GT Speed. I had to jump through some hoops and meet the requirements for the local DOT officers, but fortunately they were pretty cool. A little bit of work, but we, we made it happen. So dealer's license is approved. I was only issued one plate to start, which is okay, because it's nice to have a dealer plate, but I at least want to get one more, because two would definitely be helpful running cars back and forth from the auction. Uh, but it's official. I have my dealer's license. I have my dealer plate. I have everything in order. I'm, a, I'm an official business, and I was able to do it out of my home garage which is now its own address. It's not my residence, residential address. And not only is it official, it's so official that you actually have cars that you purchased. Now we went to the auction. I bought a couple cars for myself, bought a couple cars for yourself, had some hiccups along the way. The first day wasn't so great, but we can tell you like some of the updates that we're gonna show you in a minute is you bought a lemon, you bought a winner, and then you went again and reinvested your money into something else, right? right. So we're, you're already moving. You're already like moving forward and we're probably, when did you think you started this whole process? Um, started the dealer's license was probably back in September, October. It's now February. I've been buying cars for three weeks now. So, uh, what is that? We're about six months October. in. November, December, January, so f not even. Four or five months? Four or five months, start to finish, you're already buying cars, have already sold one, Yep. and making money? I'm still in the hole, you know? Mm -hmm. So I've spent a well, lot Well, you started more... with an investment, right? Right. Okay. I, I probably invested about, honestly, I bet I've spent about 2,500 to three grand into getting the whole dealership going between, you know, the application and getting things up to code and, you know, just making sure I have what I need, all my ducks in a row. Then once that was all set and I actually have the dealer's license, I'm already, I want to say like $10,000 into inventory now. I've spent about 10 grand of my savings in inventory for the cars. And $10,000 might sound like a lot, but when you see what I've got, it doesn't look like 10 grand. Now that was actually my question for you, which you kind of, which you did answer for me already. What did you anticipate having for like capital, working capital to purchase your inventory? Is 10 grand the number? So I actually, I mean, I don't like to divulge my finances to everybody, but I guess I will. Uh, I saved up 20 grand, hopes of just having a good cushion to be able to buy some nice cars and fall back on, you know, say if something happened, because I still have a day job. So if something happened with my day job, I'd still have a little bit of a cushion to kind of roll with while I'm getting the wheels turning on the dealership. But so far, I'm uh, I'm pissing through that fun pretty well. Before we get into your cars, one more thing. So when I started, uh, I did it the same way. I had a job, the job was paying me, I was doing my job, I was making sure everything was getting accomplished. I had my paycheck, this, you know, that like- um, Cheddar. The cheddar. I had the cheddar and then I could make this my hobby to make it happen until it did so well that I didn't need the extra original yep. cheddar. For me, it's supplemental income right now, and eventually I'd like to pull the chute and get out of my day job and just be free as a bird, running my own business out of my home garage, next to my family all the time, and being able to do what I want. Is this like a side hustle, would you say, right now? Currently, it's a side hustle, but I want to be, it, I want it to be my main hustle, and I'll be a hustler. So you've gone to the auction already. Let's you want to start with the good or the bad first. Let's go right to the bad. Let's go right to the bad. That's the most fun. They love the bad. All right. You bought a lemon. Let's go check it out. All right. While Adam's grabbing the key for it, let me explain what happened. So I have this program called startyourdealership.com and it took me 15 years worth of knowledge to create. I threw it into this program that took me four years to create. It's module by module. It's step by step. It shows you what you need to be doing, how you need to be doing it. Once you get your license, who are the vendors you use? What do you use for insurance?
insurance, for brokers, for financing? Who do you finance for the customer? How do you finance yourself? Like, where do you find locations? Pretty intricate, it's pretty detailed. Startyourdealership.com, there is a link in the description if you wanna try it out. Adam is a member, I'm a member, but that actually wasn't what I was talking about. But that isn't the reason I actually brought this up. The day you were at the auction, I was at the auction, day one. I should have given you more t more focus, more maybe more attention. I was really, really busy that day, and uh, I saw a Honda Accord, and the check engine light was flashing, kind of smoking, and I'm like, oh, well, I'll stay away from that one. Guess who bought it? This guy. All right, let's go find out what it is. You can show it, and then t explain what happened. Yeah. All right. All right. So we have new in. This is fresh inventory right here. All right. Call me into my junkyard. Don't call it that. So the way you were approved was like for a certain amount of cars for your lot, let's yeah. call it, right? right? Now, part of the stipulation was like they wanted to see where you're going to park your cars. Right. So these are out of the way. Yeah. No one's, I didn't even know these were back here from the street. Not so an eyesore. Yeah, these to the like, road to the road. But like these cars that you're working on or projects, they're out of the, out of sight, out of mind for people anyway. So it really should be an issue, right? Right. All right, let's go into this Honda Accord because it is so, beautiful. First up, I got uh, a Honda Fit at the auction. That was actually a really nice car. I went and day ahead of time I checked out the car I did all my due diligence I looked over the car I loved it you know I knew I wanted it for probably around twenty five hundred dollars because it only had ten thousand miles on it so I'm like this is one of the first cars for me Honda fits a great car it's an economy car it's uh, what Craig calls a cash car in tax season it's perfect people love cash cars around tax season so that's what I was looking for five thousand dollars and under something I can sell for a quick flip and try to make a quick buck don't tell anybody what you made off of it yet deal go ahead all right so the fit actually turned out to be a really nice car I got it for a fair price and it did need a little bit of work to it so uh, we'll we'll circle back onto that later I got this 2008 Honda Accord it's a six-speed manual with the 3.5 liter VTEC V6 uh, the car is in beautiful condition absolutely immaculate I saw it on the auction block last minute I was down at E lane this was over in B lane so I see it from across the auction I run book it over to that I go I like that Accord I want that car I walk all around it I hear the bids going around 3,500 four grand I'm like that's cheap money this is my car so I look around the car the exterior of it is beautiful not a no rust not a ding paint is excellent it's got the 18 inch wheels with awesome tires on it interior is amazing it's got the leather heated seats with the sunroof all the good stuff I look inside no check engine light no smoke out of the exhaust have no warnings on the dash whatsoever <laughs> looks awesome I'm like this is my car so the guys are all bidding they're slowing down around four grand I'm like suckers that's a deal so then I start bidding I placed two bids. I think I started at 4,500. Another guy bid something. Another guy bid something. It lands on 48. I'm the lucky winner at 4,800. So I'm like, score. I just got an awesome Accord for under five grand. They go to drive it out. And then as soon as I go to check it out in the lot, Craig goes, oh, wasn't the check engine light flashing in that thing? And it was pouring smoke out of the exhaust. And I said, no, not that I saw. Turns out they turned off the car when they pulled it into the block. I didn't realize that the tachometer wasn't up because I was just looking for a check engine light. I figured it was running. It was not running. They turned it off entirely. So no lights were on in the dash. No smoke was pouring out of the exhaust. I, I want to say I got bamboozled, but really it's my fault. So here's what happens too. It's a rookie mistake. Car is smoking. I saw it out in the lane, right? So I'm like, oh, it's running. I saw the check engine light was flashing. I saw that it was smoking. I just walk away. Out of sight, out of mind. This yeah. is what I normally do. I didn't even think to say, hey, Adam, don't buy this car because just, you know, I'm like routine. Right. You're not usually there, so it was routine for me. I didn't think about it. So I will take a little bit of that one. You Sorry about that. You shouldn't have to hold my hand. So what happens is in the auction lane, it was running. But when it gets on the auction block inside the building, they don't want all that smoke in there. Yep. So I don't think they were trying to trick anybody. Right. I think what happens is they're like, kill it. We don't want all that smoke smoking everybody out. You just, you're I mean, it was just Awful. I got awful, caught up. awful. I got caught up in the heat of the moment. I saw a car I really like. I jumped in and, you know, it, from what I could see over a quick glance around it, it looked like a really nice car. Mm -hmm. And it still does look like a really it nice car. It looks awesome. Now, I'm going to uh, go around this car because it, it really, if it didn't run so terribly, yeah. it's awesome. And actually, that engine is the same one that's in the Honda Odyssey, right? And the Honda Pilot. Yeah. Those are pretty oh, solid yeah, it's engines. It's a well-known engine. Walk me through this car briefly. All right. So, it's an 08 Accord. It's got the V6 with VTEC, six-speed manual transmission, 18-inch wheels with new tires, leather heated seats, Sunroof. Look at how clean the inside. Now it came this clean, didn't it? No, I haven't done a thing to it. It showed up this clean. I haven't cleaned it at all. Six-speed coupe too with a six-cylinder. This car is a little rocket ship. Oh yeah, this is this would be a really fun car to drive and an excellent car for anybody to own. So that's why I thought it would be an awesome first car for my inventory. I was Supposedly really excited about reliable, it. reliable, but yeah. apparently not. So I uh, I go out to the lot. I go to check it out. Sure enough, I fire it up. Check engine lights flashing, and then I smell burnt oil real bad very bad. So I look out behind the car, it's pouring smoke out of the back of the car. I'm like, well, what the hell? So then um, I'm, I'm thinking the worst, it needs piston rings, it's got a blown engine. Those might still be the case, I don't really know. I did a lot of research and I found a lot of people saying that a bad PCV valve can cause this issue in these engines because it doesn't ventilate the crankcase properly, forces 
oil into the cylinders and then it'll wind up burning oil. So it's a $30 part from Honda. I bought a new PCV valve. Doesn't smoke anymore. Done smoking. All right, let's fire it up and check it out. All right, I haven't started it in a few days. I parked it because I've been a little discouraged and I've bought some other cars I'm working on. So let's see. It's a beautiful car. I really want to drive it. I wanted to make this my personal car for a, a little while. Honorable mention to Adam's 240 collection. This is his scrapyard for parts. Not for sale. Mm, he's missing a tip. It's great. It There's was nothing. Pouring, pouring smoke before. And Nothing. No, not a drip. Not a drip. Cool. Awesome. Let's move on. You're actually two weeks into the auction. So you bought this and you bought the Fit. Uh, how much did you buy the Fit for? How much did you sell it for? What was your profit after expenses? So the Fit, it wound up going a little over what I had expected to pay. Now, a wise man told me, set a number in your head, mm -hmm. stick to it. Stick to it. If Don't it goes go over, over it. that number, just walk away. You'll find another deal. And that's good advice. Uh, it was this guy. So I set a number that I wanted to pay. I originally said 2,500, but I think I bumped it up to three grand. Uh, which for an 07 Fit is not really leaving much meat left. Mm. Mm, yeah, but it's uh, still a Honda. Yeah, it's a Honda. It's a commuter car. Auto or manual. Manual transmission. Mm, manual transmission Honda. Yep, they're just super reliable cars, great on gas, and it had low miles for the year, 110K on it. Like, yeah, how awesome. could I say no to that? So I set my price at three grand. I got it for three grand. All said and done after auction after fees, auction that fees. winds up being 3,300. Yeah. So now I'm 3,300 into this car, which I wanted for 2,500. Fine, whatever. I drive it home. It's got a bad knocking out of the front and back. So I wound up having to replace a transmission mount, both rear shocks. So uh, new transmission mount, both front, both rear shocks. I did a new serpentine belt, oil change, and just a few maintenance items to make sure that it, I'm confident in the car. Do you do these in-house? Yeah, you I do, do them yourself. Do it all myself. Save a heck of a lot of money by right. doing it yourself. Yeah, and we get good deals on parts too, so Honda parts are nice and cheap. Aftermarket, there's tons of aftermarket parts for Honda, so can't go wrong. And they're easy to work on too, so I did some nice work, uh, some, you know, some cleaning and detailing on the car, and I actually drove it around for a couple of weeks and loved it. I posted it up, I went back and forth with a lot of people on Marketplace, you know, arguing, and you know, people get really kind of vicious. They just, like, they're mean. You know meeting their price they just get like no. cutthroat and really mad that's yeah. why i have such a terrible facebook rating is because people lowball me i say no and then they give me a terrible rating right honestly though they lowball me and then i tell them to please kindly f off and then they leave me a low Facebook rating. But it feels good and to say it. I haven't reached that level quite yet. But people were just really mean. Yeah. And I can understand why you get that way. Yeah. They were insulted that I was selling a car. Really, that's <laughs> all it comes down to. They were upset that I was selling a car. And they couldn't afford it. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's what it really is. Um, so I'll just say that they hate us because they hate us. That's all. But anyways. Hate us. The so I ended up selling the fit for $4,500. After the work I had into it, it was about, I, the parts were cheap, cheap, cheap. So I had about $3,500 into it and I had my time and labor into it, which for me is free, but I can't think of it like that forever. But for, for getting started, I can think of my labor for free for now. Eventually I'm going to have to adjust that mindset. Um, so I wound up getting $4,500 for the car, which I feel is a fair price for a really nice Honda fit. So I made it- thousand bucks. I made a thousand bucks. What was your turnaround time? I wouldn't say it was a quick thousand bucks, but I made a thousand bucks. How long? Um, two weeks. Two weeks, 500 bucks a week to do yeah. a part-time job. Yeah. All right, that's Not bad. pretty good gig, 500 bucks. Yeah. Because now you have no expenses. Your overhead's already, you live here, so right. you don't have any additional expenses, which is the beauty about right. doing this. Like at mine, I can't tell you how many tens of thousands I have to spend every single month to stay afloat. Right. I mean, if you don't sell anything, it doesn't actually cost you anything besides your money tied up in your car. Right. Also, you know how you watch my videos and then you say I can talk a lot and ramble a lot? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Zip. All right, so next up, I sold the Fit uh, last <laughs> Wednesday. So I went uh, the next day to the auction because, you know, I had a pocket full of cash. I just sold my fit. So I went to the auction. Are you going right to around. the car where everyone kept telling me about the car you bought? Yeah. You see the car your brother bought? Real gem. So uh, I see it rolling through. Uh, and I've always been a GM guy. I like GMs. I like Hondas. I like Toyotas. I like Nissans. Uh, but, I, you know, it's just something I've always liked. And I had a, I had a really old Buick, a 65 Buick Wildcat. Absolutely one of my favorite cars. I've ever seen. Uh, so I've always been kind of partial to Buicks. So I found this 06, I think. Buick LaCrosse uh, with a 3.8 liter. Anybody who oh, knows Buick, the 3.8 liter. Anybody who knows GM or Buicks knows that 3800 motor is bulletproof. I actually One of the teaser best. just bought a 95 Buick Riviera, charged 3.8 liter, mm. 95,000 miles. That's a whole video. Now that's a rock. All right, so I'm gonna go over this car real quick. I'll ask the questions, you rattle them off quickly. What year is it? This is an 06 Buick 06 Buick LaCrosse, LaCrosse 3.8 yep. liter. How many miles? This has, I think, 117,000 miles on it, so not bad. And to just get real quick to the point, because everybody was really obsessed with what you paid for it, how much did you pay for this? I paid $550 for this car. 500 bucks, hoopy-doo. So this car, 500 bucks. 
they do crazy exist. low miles. They yep. do exist. I just they're coming back. Yep. So <coughs> aftermarket wheels. Anky's. Do you got yep. the Anky wheels Anky with wheels. the new rubbers on them? Wow, Look fresh at the rubbers. Meat. Look at that meat. So deep. Fresh Oof. rubber. Wow. So much rubber there. The only thing it looks like you're gonna have to pop a dent, pop a dent and spray a bumper. But somebody already replaced the bumper. Yeah, so right. You, can't complain there. you need the trim pieces. Actually, they're in the trunk. No kidding. Yep. So this is the CXL, which is not the base model. This is the one. That's that their high has, end. Has the nice leather. Oh, does it have leather? Seats, leather heated seats, sunroof, all the goodies. This is the same car as the one that's in front of it, isn't it? Isn't this an Impala? Uh, no. I think the Lucerne. Might be in a pub. Is it? This might be a Malibu. Oh, yeah, I can see don't, this in the Malibu don't right here. Quote me on that. No, this looks like a Malibu size right yeah, here. Don't quote I me think on you're that, right. I think that might be the case. But this car, look inside. Did Absolutely. it show up like this? Ab ab I haven't done a thing to it. Oh, 500 bucks. Absolutely gorgeous inside. After all the fees, all said and done, it was 700 bucks. Can't go wrong. The 3.8. 3.8 liter. Love. Excellent. It. I'm going to do some work to it. I'm going to pop out this dent. I'm going to paint the rear bumper. I'm going to do a few maintenance items just to make sure I'm confident in selling the car. And I, I don't even know. What do you think? All right. To be honest with you, uh, this car right now, because tax season is like the tax checks, I think, come in tomorrow. I think the 24th or something. Tax checks come in. 3500 bucks. Okay. Easily. Easily 3500 bucks. But yeah. you're behind the eight ball. This is, you got to get on these. Things. I got to get it going. It should already be up and listed for sale. Yeah. You should be priming people. All right. You got one more. And then we're going to get just, rel what do you call it? Reel it up. What yeah. do you call it? No idea. Finish it. Yeah. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Yeah. We're just going to wrap it up. Wrap it up. All right. So next car. Next car right here. We have, believe it or not, this is the newest car I've ever owned. In life? In life. The newest car I've ever owned, as pathetic as that might sound. I like the junks, I like the old cars, I've always liked old cars, that's it. This here is a 2011 Chevy Impala. Not a Lumina. 2011 <laughs> Chevy Impala. I keep calling it a Lumina, but it's not a Lumina. It is a Lumina. It's an Impala. So I got this Impala. It has 110,000 miles on it. I can't say no to the cars when they have low mm. miles because that's a huge attractor for any buyer. You go look at a car, you see one with 190,000 or 110,000. Yeah. Which one are you more interested in? 110. 110. Yeah. No doubt. How much was it? This car, I saw it going through. Uh, it looked pretty nice. It's a little crusty. Not mm, crispy, no. it's crusty. They always are in New yeah. England. You like it to be crispy, you don't want it to be crusty. This one's a little bit crusty because it's a New England car. Uh, but anyways, hey, you got me crooked. Tilt me right. So I got this car for $1,700. So a little more than I would have liked to have spent. But when you see the inside of this car, you'll see what. Let's check it out. All right. Now, I've been seeing you playing with the keys. I assume you're just going to show us that it has remote starter. Two locks and then a hold on the circle. That's All a good right. selling feature. So if you can hear that, we've got leaking exhaust, a winding power steering pump. Mm. And in a minute, you'll smell leaking fuel. Oh, no. It's like brand new inside. Oh, it's cherry. I love driving these. Right? They're great cars. Somebody from the golden generation would absolutely love this car. Yeah. This is a blue hair's dream. It's a, it's an 11 with how many miles? This one has 110 on it. So, fixed, repaired. I have my number in my head. What would your number be? All right. So, fixed, repaired. I got to fix a couple little rust spots on the quarters just to, like, schmoo it up and make it look halfway decent. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to make it a show car, but I want it to be, you know, a good-looking car at least. So, all said and done, I bet I'm probably going to have, you know, two grand, 2500 into it. Yeah. I'm probably going to ask 4500 for it. I would have been forty nine ninety five because it's tax season. Okay. Things are going to get hard. To, so actually, another tip: uh, things will be more expensive in like another few weeks. So people should have stocked up on their inventory already, have it clean, prepped, ready for sale. You just got your license, so you're just just a little bit behind everybody. Yeah. I bought mine December, January, fixed, clean, had them listed by February. End of February, they're going to be selling. Mid March, I'll be sold out. I'm going to go back to the auction with every other dealer that's sold out. Heating for the same type of cars, prices will be higher in another month. So we should be buying as much as you can while you can because they're gonna go up shortly. Word. Yeah. All right, so I have just a, a couple more things and then I'm gonna wrap it up. The cars you bought right now, these are the cars I bought when I started my car dealership too, uh, however long ago it was. I didn't have a ton of money. I was doing it on my own. I like the idea of cash cars because people have under $5,000 cash. Like if they want something, just own the car, they can come up with five grand. They can borrow five grand. They get a private loan, whatever. Yeah. People can get five grand. So I always try to stick with these, this price range cars. The problem is their expectations are unrealistic sometimes because it's like they squeeze the juice out of that oh, yeah. stone. They want everything they can get. They try to negotiate negotiate for too much or they uh, expect more than it is, it can be pretty 5, troublesome. 5,000 and under is the bottom of the market. Yeah, it used to be 2,500 was the bottom mm -hmm, of the market. Those bummed. days are gone. Yeah. So now that $2,500 car is now a $5,000 car yeah. just because of the day and age we're that in. That $2,500 car, you don't even want them. But wait, there's more. Oh. I bought one more car. This one's my prize of last week. I've Let's actually been it. driving it around already. Let's go see it. And you know, believe it or not, it's something I've wanted for a little while. I didn't realize there was more. As, as, uh, as lame as that might sound. Well, before we get into that car, I know you were a little down 
in the dumps about that Honda Accord, so you yeah. went and bought yourself a toy? So I blew a good chunk of my nest egg because um, I was unhappy the way I spent it. I, you know, I spent $8,000 at the auction. I got the Fit, which was a great car, the Accord, which looks like a great car, but still needs some work. So I was a little bummed that I spent so much of my money on stuff that's not really making me very happy. So what did I do? I invested in my happiness. And this is what I got, my new four-wheeler. I love these. Honda 400EX. Oh, that four-wheeler. Nice. Good so, job. Yeah, I got the 07 400 EX. I got it for a great price. I'm super happy with it. I have the state trails right next to my house. Anytime I'm stressed out, irritated, annoyed, I just go out and blast this thing. This seems like the best deal out of everything you purchased. Oh, yeah. Yep. I got this for 2600 bucks. I love this quad. It's so much fun. It's exactly what I wanted when I was six. Since I was 16 years old, I've wanted one of these. And I've been on motorcycles and dirt bikes all my life. You just can't wait to start it. Oh. child so far my investment in happiness is paying off tenfold we're dragging on let's see show me what else now you can see the type of space adam has not a ton of space but he's made space behind his garage on the side of his garage it's a main road so that's how you got it zoned appropriately not many people can do this in their residence i'm sure like the neighbors way back there wouldn't allow their neighbors to do such things but if you look at the traffic you have this is a pretty prime location and there are already a lot of businesses yeah on it's a main road, road yeah. zoned commercial so that's how it was able to happen for you all right then can we go you'll notice that adam had to uh address his door separately from his home ah uh, the matrix i forgot about this car honorable mention is the 240 is this the one that's going green or is this tom's no this that's tom's. the green it's already this painted green, yeah. this is my green 240 i've got a fully built sr20 for it i've got the full sylvia front end i have a full brown interior Ooh, buttercream just absolutely beautiful anything that's not full? That. full 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 everything's full everything's okay. brand new it's gonna have zero miles on the odometer absolutely my pride and joy i'm gonna keep that car for the rest of my life my three-year-old daughter already thinks it's her car over here we got my friend tommy 240 Ironically, he's got a 180. So this is his 180 we're restoring right now. He's going- Right hand drive? It's a right hand nice. drive. This is also an SR20. Uh, this is Tom's pride and joy. He's about to have a baby in a couple of months and we need to hurry up and get this done before all of his money is sucked up by that kid. Mm, so it happens. This is uh, this is one of the back burner projects we got going on right now. Tommy's actually gonna be over in just a little bit so we can keep hammering down on this thing. Walk me through this. But this is my 2006 Toyota Matrix. It's just over on the miles at 190,000, but runs like new. So This I is got, like your Honda Fit, essentially. Yeah, I got this car on an if bid for $800. Toyota for $800. $800, a Matrix for $800. Wow. Now that was an if bid. So I was hoping that it, he was going to accept it, give me that okay. They called me back and he said, oh, he really wants a thousand for it. And I didn't know if I could kind of negotiate or haggle. I didn't want to lose the car because he was going to get that money one way or another from me or some other Joe Schmo. I'm going to explain what an if bid is real quick. So at the auction, you can be the high bidder. And what was your high Bid? My high bid was 800 bucks. 800 bucks. That was the only one bidding. So that's probably why it was only $800. There was no one else bidding against you. The seller may have wanted more money. So the auctioneer or the seller will say, I'll sell it on an if Give me till the end of the auction to think about it. Usually you'll have like two hours for the seller to think about it. They may want to see how they do the for that day. Maybe they sold like 10 cars. Yeah. And then they're like, all right, let that one go. Maybe they had a terrible day and they're like, can't let it go. Yeah. So it depends how much they, money they've made on their other cars. But typically they have two hours to say yes or no, or maybe till the end of the day to say yes or no. And then after that, you can say no to it, but you're bound to that car at that price, which is what happened to your Accord. So we didn't talk about that. Adam had an if on the Accord. And then when he told me he sold it, or when he told me he had an if on, I'm like, wait, is that the one with the check engine light? Is that the one that was smoking? Yep. It's an if. We'll wait two hours, set an alarm, call, cancel it right away. That's a little loophole. An option loophole. Couldn't get out of it. We were at lunch, like crossing our fingers. It didn't go that You way. got it like yeah. at one hour, 59 minutes. Yeah, they dropped I called it. Like, yeah, we just got it. It's it's Another loophole. loophole. The title didn't show up. Kick it. Supposed to be there. Wasn't there. Kick it. Not so lucky. The title showed up and they accepted the offer. They right. do. We'll do Craig's famous poly. True. So we got the 2006 Toyota Matrix. It's not the XRS, it's not the all-wheel drive, it's not the 2.5 liter, it's not a manual transmission, yeah. but it's a good car. It's a four-cylinder, obviously they're all four cylinders, front-wheel drive, automatic transmission, got 190K on it, runs like new. Uh, it had some really ugly hubcaps on it, but good tires on the steel wheels, so good old Amazon. Those Jeff, look like factory correct yeah. hubcaps. Jeff Bezos got me these, nice. brand new. 
So 50 bucks, it already upgraded the whole look mm -hmm. of the car. Now I got the new the new hubcaps. And you did some serious body work to this thing. So you're gonna spray the hood, obviously, but even more than that, like at 190,000 miles, to be honest with you, I would just spray the hood. Yeah. I'm assuming, are you gonna blend it or are you just gonna paint the hood? So this car um, overall is in pretty okay shape, but this is somebody's beater car. Their commuter mm -hmm. car, they wanna save gas. They don't wanna have to worry about getting dinged or driving in salt, anything yeah. like that. The hood had a horrific amount of stone chips that were all rusted and just disgusting. Huge dissatisfier. Anybody looking at this car would look at the hood first and go, ugh, I'm not gonna drive that thing around. So I stripped it all down with 80 grit on the DA sander, found a couple of spots where I wanted to fill a little dingleberries, so that's why you got the schmoo on there. I'm gonna smooth it out, prime the whole hood, and refinish the hood. I just got a pint of paint. It was less than 50 bucks. Pint of paint. Pint of paint. Pint of paint. It was probably now, 40 bucks for a pint of let's, paint. Let's say you spray the whole hood. You, that's a pretty good amount of body work to a fender. Now you're gonna have to spray the whole fender, right? Correct. Or are you gonna yeah. blend it? This is, I was, I, I would love to blend the fenders, but obviously you can't blend the fender at this point because now the paint is gonna be that close right. to the door. I'd have to blend the door mm -hmm. to the fender. But there was a big rusted area on the fender right here that I just didn't like. And I'm already getting into the paint work. I was already gonna blend the fender. So I might as well just strip off that little bit of rust right there. I'm not even gonna pull any parts off. I'm gonna pass the headlights. I'm gonna spray the whole nose of this car. Bolt fenders, hood, front bumper, it's gonna be shining nice. like a jet. It will be from the mirrors forward. Right. Yeah, for the whole sure. Nose is gonna be fresh, brand new, and I'm gonna paint it for probably under $200, and it's gonna look as good as new. Interior's decent. And it's a Toyota. This looks like a Toyota Celica steering wheel, actually. Yeah. Same same gauges, too. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. What'd you pay for it? I ended up paying, uh, I got uh, got the bid accepted at $1,000. They agreed at $1,000. So what is that, like twelve seventy? Probably pay like, yeah, twelve and change. Yeah. Okay, 12, 12 and change for this car. Yeah. And you probably have a $3,500 car, -ish, yeah. I would say. Yeah, so far I've done... Um, I, the belt was squeaking pretty bad, so I wanted to put a serpentine belt on it because it's easy enough to do and cheap. So I went and bought a serpentine belt for it. Well, the tensioner seized. So mm. now the $25 serpentine belt is actually a $120 tensioner plus the $25 serpentine belt. Then uh, the way the tensioner comes out, there's a huge bolt that goes right into the frame rail. So you have to loosen an engine mount, lift the engine up to get that bolt out. Yeah. And when I was doing that, the old exhaust cracked and broke. So then the exhaust broke. I had to weld Engineering at its finest ruined the exhaust too. Um, All right, so you're gonna make some money on this one too though. So your investment's tied up into some cars, but most of them are winners. Yeah. Uh, and it's only been three weeks-ish. Three, that three weeks in. And you're already profitable on one car. Right. So um, you have inventory, none of them are complete lemons. Yeah. And you're profitable already on one of them. Five cars in three weeks, plus my quad. Yeah, nice. not too bad. Yeah, that's a pretty good start. So I'm gonna take a walk out of here, show them what I bought at the auction. Nice. Because it's a cool difference to see like how it starts to how it progresses, mm. okay? And I'm gonna let you go. Add them all together, ladies and gentlemen. And GT Speed. GT is, Speed. Is the name of his business. And this right here is my newest pickup. This is a 2014 Silverado that I just grabbed from the auction today. So like I had mentioned, most of my inventory was around fifteen to $2,000 is what I spent for it when I bought them. I was selling them for normally like a $1,000 profit per car after all my expenses. It's pretty simple to make $1,000 on every car and it's fast turnover. So like the idea is move metal. You're just and selling cars and buy more cars. So just keep rolling it over. Eventually, I got enough capital that I wanted to get out of the headache cars and started buying nicer cars, newer cars. So my inventory now went from like 25 to five to 65 to 85 to 10,000 and under for a long time. I was just selling $10,000 and under. Now it's right around like $20,000 and under. I have some $25,000 cars, but the more expensive they get, the harder the buyer is to find. So I found the niche is like 12 to $18,000 works really, really well for me. So I buy trucks and SUVs. So I'm able to get like a newer 2014 and newer under 150,000 mile vehicle and still be able to sell them and have decent cars for around 15 grand on average. And it works out really, really well for me. Now, Adam has goals of doing like Hondas and Toyotas. That's his specialty. He likes working on old Nissans as well. He buys what he knows. He fixes them himself. I now have a shop with a mechanic and we have a detailer. We have a manager. We have cars.com and auto trader and car gurus and all those things. So as I progressed, so did my overhead. Adam has no overhead. Mine's significantly increasing and it increases every single day. I have to keep making more money because everything's getting more expensive. So sometimes like, honestly, I loved working like this when I started my business because I could shut down for the day and it didn't really cost me anything, it was great. Now I'm tied to it. I have to have regular business hours that just keep my handcuffs on all the time. So if this video was informational, educational, informative, 
Thumbs ups are really, really appreciative. We're gonna do these car dealership updates all the time on Adam. I love following his progress and I think it's really helpful for you guys if it's something you're interested in. If it is something you're interested in, I highly, highly suggest clicking the link in the description for startyourdealership.com if you wanna learn how to get access to the dealer auctions and start your own, get your own dealer's license. It's really just jam packed full of information. Maybe you don't wanna get your own dealer's license and you just wanna start buying and selling cars for profit, I got you. Carflipping101.com teaches you how to buy and sell cars for profit legally without a dealer's license. So I got you covered on both sides and there's a link in the description for both of those. I'll see you all later. Thanks for watching. Adios. Oh, and if not, you can just sign up for our email list. Get notifications every time we make new videos, get updates in the market. Uh, so if you go to either of those links in the description, sign up for our email list and you get emails. That too, no obligations. So I'll see you all later. Adios.